Hi everyone, after a long break I am going to design you a 2.4 GHz dipole antenna in CST. So let's begin. First click on new template for antenna design, click microwave RF antennas, click next, click wire antenna, we'll use this template, we'll use integral equation, we can use also time domain equation but it will take a long time for calculating. Integral equation is the best. And we have millimeter, gigahertz, nanoseconds, and Kelvin. Click next. Click two to three gigahertz. We will need far field. And let's look at the effort for intent turning purposes. 2.4. Next. Antenna wire. Let's click 2.4 gigahertz. Dipole antenna for using next time. And here opens the CST document. Let's first put on the parameters. Our first parameter will be lambda parameter and let us calculate the lambda. Uh, CST have a good macro for calculating lambda parameter. Just click macro, calculate, and calculate wavelength. And here appears the windows for calculating wavelength, half wavelength, and quarter wavelength. Let's put on the triggers value and click enter. And if we don't change the epsilon and mu values, we will have length wavelength of 124 millimeters. Just click OK. Click cancel, put on one, two, four, and click enter. Next, uh, we will define the radius, which will be the radius of our antenna. CST use this coefficient for calculate for defining uh, radius of the dipole antenna. We will use the same number. Just click radius of dipole next we will put on the distance between two parts of the antennas so let's define it as d and for example 0 0.025 times lambda distance between rods and next we will define of course the length of the our antenna length which will be half of the lambda lambda okay up sorry lambda okay so length of antenna in the small project like this, you will not have to define the descriptions, but if you are going to design a larger antenna, this will be helpful because you will probably lose track of the parameters and forgot how you define this. So click save to not uh, lose the project type all. Click enter. So it defines the project and let's design our antenna. First click modeling, click cylinder, click escape and yeah, here's the window. Let's put on the parameters, outer radius R, inner radius 0, X center, Y center will be 0 and our antenna will be on Z axis, so minus L uh, length over 2 to length over 2. We will choose parameter as pack and component antenna and click preview. We will have the cylinder here and let's click OK. We have cylinder. So let's divide this cylinder to be able to excite this antenna. So let's just click you can use also cylinder but break is also good uh, just break we will extract it 
and it will be from uh, minus r to r minus r to r and z minimum will be it's important minus the to the click minus the over two to the over two click preview and click OK. Next, click on Tanya, click uh, minus in the keyboard and choose this and click enter. So we will have the distance between two antennas and we will add the source between these two uh, dipole antenna rods. So to add, the, we have uh, different type of sources in CST. So we will use discrete port for exciting this antenna. So click, uh, sorry, click H for choosing H1 and click again H and choose the edge of this antenna. We will have now two edges. You can see that they choose here and click discrete port. So this, what does this discrete port uh, does? does? Uh, this discrete port creates a discrete source according to your choice. For example, if you choose the S parameter, it will define the ideal current which with impedance that you defined here, and it also excites and uh, absorbs power. So in the end, it can calculate S parameter of this antenna. You can also choose voltage and current and will create the ideal voltage and current uh, sources. So if we click OK, we will have here the our discrete port. Uh, in the definition of the CST, it tells that it will excite this antenna from this uh, red conical section. So we had all been set up. We have antenna, our discrete port. Let that uh, check the frequency two to three. Background material to be normal. Boundaries to be open. That's uh, not symmetric planes. Okay, always check this parameter before uh, starting your simulation. And uh, we have also here field monitor for different things. Let's just delete this. And just you only use the F2.4. And if we click start, it will start to evaluate the simulation. I have already did the simulation, so let's look at the uh, this simulation results. For in order to save the time, we have here the port, same antenna here, and I have the S parameter graphs for different uh, results. In here, we calculated lambda to be 124. Ah, our results have been uh, calculated. Let's look at the S parameter. And we have here some problem. Let's look at this uh, after looking at the results. So here we have the results of the antenna. We have here calculated lambda parameter as 125, which we can see that despite we have calculated for the 2.4 GHz antenna, it simulates antenna in 2.2 GHz. So in order to increase their frequency, we must decrease the antenna dimensions. So uh, we ha I have decreased antenna dimensions to 120. So I further decreased it and we can see that at 115 millimeters of the length we have the excitation uh, in 2.4 gigahertz. This is mainly because we have the distance between two antenna rods. So let's look at this S parameter. So the second parameter is that we defined is the radius of the antenna. So I have also changed this radius of the antenna. We can see here the 
green graph shows the radius with uh, 0 0.3 millimeters and the red graph shows the parameter with 0 0.92 millimeters. So in the results, we can see that if we decrease the radius of our dipole antenna, we will have a sharper S11 parameter with higher quality factor and lower bandwidth. So that has been spoken. Let's look at the far-field parameter of our antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. It's calculating far-field in equations. So we have here a good far-field parameter of dipolar, toroidal far-field parameter. And we can see it in polar coordinate also as here main lobe magnitude 2.20 dbi uh, with angular width of 78 degrees Let's look at, and we have see uh, we can see that our radiation efficiency is almost zero and total efficiency is zero minus 0 0.15 db and radiation and the total efficiencies are calculated automatically and many of you may not know what does this mean uh, CST defines this as the for example radiation efficiency as the uh, total power uh, power ratio of the uh, of the uh, <laughs> I forgot. Uh, let's look at the help. That's why uh, it's useful to look at the help of the CST. Click radiation efficiency. Uh, use this help. It's very helpful, and it has all the information that you can find about CST. Uh, here we have the radiation efficiency. It defines the ratio between the radiated power and the accepted power of the antenna. And the total efficiency is defined as the radiated power, ratio of the radiated power to simulated power. In contrast, radiation efficiency, total efficiency also includes the losses due to the reflection of the feeding location. So total efficiency will be all, uh, always lower than the radiation efficiency. So in the end, uh, you can see that how we designed the dipole antenna. And I will add this project file uh, and, uh, under the description where you can download this. In my next video, I will design a planar inverted F antenna and show you how it is done and the monopolar antenna so have a good day see you in the next video please don't forget to subscribe and comment have a good day